Good afternoon, everybody. It is Tuesday, uh, and we are here for another edition of the MSP Initiative. Today, we have uh, commonly found during non-coronavirus times, uh, man of the channel, Matt Scully, is currently with Mail Protector. How are you doing, Matt? Hey, George, I'm doing good. How are you? That's the question. Oh, I am feeling fantastic, my friend. Yeah. We're, you know, bouncing around the country and you know, meeting MSPs on their turf, socially distanced and safe. But uh, it looks, uh, I, I've been t- you know, saying it as I've been moving along, uh, things are looking a lot better out there than it seems, right, on the news. Yeah. And yep. people are, are actively trying to, you know, do business and, and, you know, airports are running and traffic is there and all that good stuff. So I'm feeling kind of good about, you know, the current state of affairs to some degree or feeling more positive, if that's yep. right. Way. But uh, so far, so good. The MSP Initiative Channel Strong Tour is live and well. Hey, can I give you a compliment? Sure. I mean, you know, you probably don't get those that much, but I'm going to want to give you one. So when I uh, took over this position, um, my strategy is, you know, is I wanted to go and talk to as many channel influencers as possible, right? And, um, you know, and then obviously we have the, our go-to-market strategy was to do, you know, the events, you know, speak at the engagements, that, that type of thing. And then, um, but you know, obviously that's been put on the shelf. And when I'm speaking to a lot of these guys that are movers and shakers in the channel, everybody is impressed with the MSP initiative, every single person. So I, you know, I, I know you have a big hand in that. Um, I, I, I'm watching your efforts, you know, um, I, I, I know what you're trying to do. And as you know, some channel veteran to another man, I, I applaud you for that. I really do. So congratulations on um, thinking I, out of the box. I really appreciate that, man. I really do. Yeah. I'm just, only so many hours in the day and willingness yeah. is, big, is a big thing of it. So like Matt, why don't you, for people who don't know you well, sure. um, why don't you just give us a quick trip down memory lane? Where did you start professionally? How did yeah. you get to your current role now so that people can kind of feel your, 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 your journey a little bit? Yeah, of course. Okay. So um, I graduated school in 1997 um, in Minnesota, St. Mary's College in Minnesota. And I started working for a moving logistics company, which then morphed into, within a year or two, uh, into a temporary housing position. So I worked for a temporary housing um, industry for about maybe the better part of about 15 years, okay? And so basically what temporary housing is, is it was in New York and San Diego, when um, executives, uh, the Secret Service, um, ball players, musicians, um, travelers, you know, business professionals, mobility professionals would come into New York or San Diego. My job was to go and find them temporary homes starting at 30 days and going longer. Um, it was great, had a, had a great run with it. Um, but what happened towards the end was, was that all of a sudden you started seeing the, what the Silicon Valley's guys, right? The Airbnb kind of saying, hey, look, instead of giving these guys 30, 60, 90 days of temp living, what they could do is they can go and find it on their own through an application and it could be much cheaper and the onus is on them, right? So they manage the logistics of it. So it, the, the industry wasn't dying, but it was changing. But at the same time, now we're going back to around 2015, there was this company that was uh, started in uh, Norwalk, Connecticut, which is where I am born and raised and I currently live. Uh, this company just started just making moves and, uh, there was this one guy that I was, went to middle school and high school with who was just always one of those guys. He was a winner, you know, like he was always one of those guys that was, you know, steps ahead and, you know, professionally. And when that company landed this guy, I said, wow, I need to take a look at this company to see what I can do to get in there. That company was called Datto. So <laughs> I worked at Datto, um, you know, it, it started as a salesperson and moved into the channel development manager. Um, and I had a good run there. And that uh, ended around, I want to say May of 2020. At which point, um, some of the goodwill, some of the good people, some of the good um, friends that I've made in the channel talked to me about this opportunity that was happening at the Mail Protector and um, got in touch with the CEO um, and him and I had a couple you know, great conversations. And then, you know, we, I met with the leadership team um, and again, just gelled. Everyone just gelled. And, you know, when I would say, hey, this is how I view things. And they're like, hey, this is how I view things. And I said, wow, man, this is such a great collaboration that it just became a great fit. And so on June 15th, 2020, I started with Mail Protector. 
Are you familiar with Mail Protector? I, I am a little bit familiar with Mail Protector. I mean, we've seen them at a lot of the events. So, I yep. mean, obviously, you know, just kind of seeing who's out there and who's visible. So, let's zoom back for a second. So, you started in sales, right? As, you know, sure. on the vendor yeah. side, selling two MSPs. I'm That's sure you've talked sure. to people in many different regions of the country. Sure. Um, when you're trying to figure out if an MSP is legit, Mm -hmm. What are the questions that come up in order to validate that somebody's not kind of overstating their situation? Okay. So that, that's an awesome question. Like one of the things that we got, okay. So my territory when I was at data was in the, the um, you know, parts of Texas, sort of in the Midwest and the cloud adoption wasn't as much as it was into the, um, uh, and on the East coast. Okay. So what we did was we saw a lot of those guys, that were guys and girls, um, but a lot of those MSPs that didn't really fall off all the way off the um, uh, break fix model. And it was kind of dabbling into, um, into, into the MSP space. And what was interesting about that, and it was just like the perfect timing for Datto, was that we were so sales and marketing focused that our, goal, our role as a salesperson there was to grow their business. And we had a lot of that marketing material. We had a lot of those nurture campaigns. We had a lot of those resources um, to help these guys grow their business. And that's a lot of the stuff, you know, I'm taking with me, those philosophies I'm taking with me to Mail Protector. Um, but to answer your question in an in easy, I, I believe in accountability groups. I believe that if you want to exceed um, in, in the MSP space, you got to be willing to speak to your peers. You got you join the different groups that are out there. Channel Pro, ASCII, you know, name them. IT Evolve, uh, Taylor Business. I mean, I could go on and on. Listen to McBain. Um, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a plethora of resources. Sobel. There's so many different resources that are out there. And the other thing also is talk to your solution providers. These guys that have been in the channel, you know, for years, you know, and the one thing that when I um, was looking for my new opportunity, I, I put a, a post on LinkedIn and I literally had, you know, 20, 30 people responding to me, you know, and I, I said, God, I didn't even know I was loved. And I, and, I, and I took a step back, George, and I was like, this isn't a Matt Scully thing, right? This is a channel thing. This is a channel thing and we protect our own. And um, I was, I, I fell um, into that lucky category there. No, it's, I mean, listen, it is absolutely communities. A lot of people don't participate. A lot of people do. Uh, I feel like I keep on stumbling into people who don't realize that the community exists, which is kind of hard to believe, but it happens all the time. I call it castle mentality, right? You know, cause yeah. I think everybody's on their own Island when clearly that's not the case. Yeah. Uh, so let me ask you a question then. So, you know, zooming from the time that you started off selling to MSPs and then now being more of a, you know, channel evangelist, if you would, right. Community. Sure. You know, why is it that MSPs struggle on taking marketing seriously and helping their sales efforts internally? Well, it's because there's the, the, the different size of these MSPs, right? Sometimes you have one that's like one or two man shop. Um, some of them are techs that gone into business owners. Um, I know from my previous company, when we would do um, what is the one thing that keeps you up at night? The, uh, the first year, I think it was in 2018 that I you know, was presenting on it, it was 56% said that sales and marketing keep them up at night. It went down to 44, which is good because that means there's much more engagement between the vendors, at least in my opinion, between the vendors and the MSPs. Um, I'm not allowed to say vendors. I'm supposed to say solutions providers. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think with, with what we have out there, specifically with this market automation, um, you, you know, like that, that the sales and marketing can't be an excuse anymore. It just can't be They, You know, like the vendor, like I'm seeing that a lot of solution providers, their model is under their salespeople is to help the MSPs sell their solutions. And how do you do that, right? You know, I mean, get them on webinars, um, get them on end user presentations, um, you know, create a marketing plan with them. You know, do they know, you know, do they know where all the material you have? I mean, is it easy access? If I'm an MSP and I want to learn something about Mail Protector, do I know where to go to get it? Um, you know, and having these tools readily available. Um, and again, having these paths, having these, 
you know, sales and marketing conversations is going to ease that burden. Absolutely. So it's interesting though, Matt, because if you talk to the average guy that you're running on the street in the IT business, they'll say way too many phone calls, way too many emails. They're intentionally dodging those conversations yep. because they think that they're just being sold at rather than, a, you know, partnered with. Mm -hmm. Is that true still today? Like, Good. Is it is it a mistake for the MSP to ignore the call altogether until they absolutely have an on fire burning need? Like, where is that demarcation point? Right. Okay. So so when you're getting those robo callers, okay, um, I, I did not find it to be an effective strategy. You know. Um, at all, you know, I mean, like in other words, just dial, 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 you know, you, you become a telemarketer or, you know, or whatever it's called. Um, what are those things? Call center, right? Yeah. Robo, you know, yeah. And, robo yeah, dial, yeah, telemarketer. You, you have to have business conversations with your MSPs. You have to have business conversations with them, you know, whether it's the beginning of the year or if it's a, you know, a, a campaign that you're running, find out what their goals are, you know, find out what the verticals are they're using, find out what they're looking to do. You know, uh, we're looking to grow our business by 10%, you know, in Q4. Great. Okay. What are we going to do together to help you get there? You know, um, you know, those, they have to have business conversations. The other thing that also that I believe that, um, uh, you know, solution providers need to do is brand themselves better, is, is, is brand themselves better. Um, you know, I, I have never seen you, George, without that blue shirt on, never. And I've known you for three, four years, right? I, I know when I see that blue shirt, I'm speaking to George Bardisi, you know, when I see that blue shirt, I'm speaking to George Bardisi, right? It's, it's, you've got to brand themselves better. You know, I, I did this thing and, you know, you, you and I kind of, you know, had off, off um, line conversations, but, you know, I'm in uh, January, 2020 and I'm just, you know, NFL playoffs. And I'm just like, man, like I, and I'm, I, I love sports. Right. And I said, like, you know what? I love the channel. I love the sports. And I was like, why don't I have create this thing called the channel sports guys. Right. And what it was, was just a, a simple, you know, added, added 20 guys in there and uh, just a, a bunch of guys that are in the channel, solution providers, MSPs, whatever the case may be. Um, anyone in it go on to the channel sports guys and talk about sports, drop articles, you know, drop opinions, you know, that type of thing. We did polls in the beginning, you know, um, and then of course, 30 days later, sports is dead. Right. So, um, but here's my point. I'm at an event about maybe, uh, about 15 to 20 days after I started the channel sports guys. And I had three people who I did not know three people who I did not know said, Hey, Hey, I'm, I recognize you from the channel sports guys, you know? And I said, okay, well, maybe that's my brand, right? You know, like that's one of, that's one of the brand ads. I mean, that's how, so yeah, I, th I think that, you know, you, you can you have the answers, I guess, is to have business conversations and brand yourself. And um, how you do that is your own personal decision. Nope, can't hear you. Mute, you're muted. Okay, sorry. I was gonna oh, say, okay. so, social has been a great tool. I feel like it may have been overdone in a couple of areas, but I think everybody should take the willingness to take an angle at something differently, right? You know, sure. whether it's to their end customer as an MSP and their groups, their associations, their verticals. And then obviously you see the vendors are trying to become or solutions providers trying to become creative. One of the things that we often hear, and I hear it all the time is, um, and we see it in, in these surveys, right? Where yeah. at the end of the year, you know, you, you know, the, the, the channel vendor community says, oh, well, we didn't spend 50% of our MDF money. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I'm like, wait a minute, 50%, how, how does half of the money not get spent, right? I mean, we're not Congress here, uh, but it seems like connecting the actual partner, the MSP with those funds seems to be problematic at times. Why, why is there a disconnect? I, I, it could be personnel issues. I have, I have no idea. I mean, I mean, that, that's, I mean, I don't understand why that would be a disconnect. I mean, this is something that your solution provider is providing for you to help you grow your business. I mean, in some cases, the return on investment is over 500%. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a no brainer. Um, I, I, what I would really strongly suggest you do, especially on, on the solution providers is establish a, a an advisory board, you know, get, uh, you know, 10 of your partners, regardless of what size, 
and get in their ear, talk to them, ask them these questions, you know, like, did you, first of all, did you know that our MDF program uh, existed? And did you know what the parameters of it? I mean, those are great ways to have those business conversations on that prior question you just asked me. Um, you know, the, that, that is, a, yeah, I mean, um, if, if you're look, if I'm an MSP and I see a company that has an MDF program, I believe that's a gift to the channel. For oh, everybody. like you've, you've been involved in MDF spend oh, yeah. and events and stuff like that. Sure. You know, granted that may have been different before Corona hit. Can mm -hmm. you give an example or a set of examples to the people who watch this video on where that money can go as an MSP, right? Like where do, how do I, how do I spend that MDF money and make it work for me? Okay, so great question. Um, okay, well, first and foremost, you have to have a pre-planning. Okay, look, what are you looking to do? Okay, what are you looking to get out of this? You know, you want to sell X amount more solutions. Um, you want to, you know, build your brand. I'm talking about from, from an MSP perspective. Um, you know, you, you want to, you know, increase your presence in specific verticals. Um, a lot of people have heard of you, but they're not necessarily signing. So you, what you want to do is you want to have those pre-planning conversations and find out what is exactly is your mission, what, what, what it is that you exactly want to do. Then what you want to do is you want to speak to your solution providers, the one that's going to be giving you the MDF funds, right? Now, I'm telling you, I know the channel. These, so these solution providers are not going to just hand you, you know, $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 and say, okay, go have an event, have fun. You know, no, they have skin in the game. They have skin in the game. So when you have that pre-planning conversation, you talk about what, what you want to do. Usually it's just, um, solutions provider is going to be able to say, okay, well, we've done it, uh, you know, at this venue and this has been successful, whether it's Top Golf, whether it's, uh, you know, Ruth Chris Steakhouse or wh wherever it's be. Okay. They, they could talk I've, heard, about the I've, heard of the, I've heard of the movie theater thing being popular, right? When a new film. Star Wars. Out. But it, prob the yeah. problem is it's not effective. It's not effective. Anything that's after hours, I don't believe is effective because you're getting the wrong crowd in. Okay. You're, you're not, you're not getting that business crowd in. I, I'm sorry. Star Wars is not an effective way. I mean, you know, listen, somebody can probably put on these comments. Oh, I did a Star Wars and it was great. And I, we, we made them, well, good, congratulations. But in, in my experience, uh, you're getting kids, you know, you know, you're, you're getting family members, you're getting friends. Um, and I don't find that to be too much of an effective way. I'm, I'm you know, the most effective is breakfasts, lunch and learns, you know, um, and what you should totally do is when you're having these conversations on how you're going to, um, you're, you're going to bring it in or do the, the event, how do you bring in that solutions provider to help you during that event? And I'm talking from a presentation and content standpoint, right? Like they, they need to be able to contribute to the content of that presentation or that event. Um, the other things that also that I suggest is take a look at um, uh, evergreen uh, leaders like the FBI. Uh, you know, secret service, uh, cyber insurance executives, and have them on the bill at those events, all right? Then what you do is then you just do the logistics, okay? All right, we're inviting X amount of people. This is what it's going to cost. You know, be as transparent and make sure you're, you got, you're giving everything to the solutions provider for the approval, okay? Once it's approved, it's a go time. And once it's go time, it's just, it's the execution. But the most important thing, George, the most important thing that you got to keep in mind is the most important part is the follow up. Okay. Do not, do not be one of those people that just executes a beautiful event where everything was absolutely perfect. And all of a sudden marketing thought sales was following up on them, you know, and sales thought marketing was, you know, uh, marketing was just trying to impress the solution provider CEO to make sure that, you know, the flowers were cut and the people were wearing nice tuxedos and the, the oven or the, the bread was hot, you know, that type of thing. The follow-up is the most crucial, crucial part. And you have to have meetings with the solution provider afterwards. So you get a list of attendees who was there. Once you get that list, uh, then you know, obviously you scrub it. And then what you do is you hit them why it's hot. Okay. You know, you get them right where they were, um, you know, where they're, it's memorable. Um, you know, they're, they're wowed by the presentation that they saw from you. They're wowed by the presentation they saw from the solution provider. They're wowed by the presentation they saw from the, you know, the FBI agent, whatever the case may be. And then what you do is you begin those business conversations. 
And I, I find this in, you know, like if this could be a summary of anything that we've talked about today is that once as a solution provider, once you find yourself in the midst of those conversations, those business conversations, you become much more memorable and much more strategic to the goals that they're trying to accomplish. Nope, oh, muted again. It auto muting here. That was probably the most comprehensive, you know, idea, you know, structure, follow, walk through through an MDF conversation. I think I've heard. I mean, quite frankly, everybody well, talks about it. Nobody understands how it works uh, unless they've done it already. You know, have you talked to Mike De Palma? Well, I, mean, I I haven't talked to Mike De Palma. Maybe we'll have him on next. But uh, right. at the end of the day, it sounds like you could get several thousand dollars of 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 spend plus. But more importantly, it sounds like contribution from your from your vendor partner, right? Like yep. they will actually come to you. They will engage with you. They'll help you put the content together. It's not like they're just sending you a check and saying, hey, make it work. Let us know what the results are or else we've got problems. So it sounds like that's a little bit different from, you know, again, I feel like people are scared of this, either scared of it, don't realize that it exists or don't know how to do it, right? So. Mm -hmm very intriguing that, you know, we're trying to get those funds out there, right? And help those people, um, you know, move their, move their sales and marketing forward. Let me ask you another question. Sure. From an MSP standpoint, how often should the MSPs be educating their customers or re-educating their customers or updating their customers on the existing solutions that are already in place, right? Usually there's a pain point they plug in something to fix that pain point. You never talk about it again, right? Sure. But obviously, this technology continues to grow over time. And I feel like there's a disconnect between the messaging that comes to the MSP and that the messaging the MSP ultimately delivers to the end customer. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've got a case in point that's perfect for that, which is what we're working on right now. Um, we launched in 2018 a... Uh, um, a an email encryption solution called Bracket, okay? I don't know if you know how Bracket works. It's really cool. Basically what happens is you put brackets in the actual subject line and that email is encrypted. So you send it out and that email is encrypted. It's unbelievable. It's great. It's fun. Um, but you know, again, you know, uh, my predecessor, uh, Ted Roller, I'm sure you know Ted, um, you know, he was very engaged with the MSP community. And he says, oh my God, this thing is, this is great. This is great. Uh, but it's, you know, if we could do this or if we could do that to make it even better experience. Okay. And so we went to the drawing board and this is an, all in 2020. And this is what we're going to launch next week. And I'm not going to tell you what we're going to launch because of the fact that I would be fired if I did that. But um, we, we are launching bracket three. We are launching bracket three um, next week at the Kaseya Connect IT event. And that is where we are spending the majority of this week, also last week, putting that out there. We have a teaser video. Um, you know, we, we, are, we are calling our, our um, MSPs to let them know we're, you know, we are getting, we're getting on top of this. You know, we're, we're, we're getting on top of this to, to let them know on it. So when we have a big launch like that, I think you could do something pretty big and maybe at one of the conferences or not. But on updates, you know, simple updates that are not going to be, you know, game changing. I think having having those conversations um, with those, you know, with your MSPs on that. Um, also, obviously, on any type of updates that you're doing that should go onto your client portal. So when you every time your client goes on, excuse me, an MSP goes onto their portal, they could see the updates that are there. You know, maybe a lot of the stuff is technical that you know the sales and marketing business owner doesn't really care too much about, but a technician would be like, Hey, wait, that's great. You know? So yeah, I think, I think, um, you know, the constant communication is absolutely perfect. Yeah, no, I get that. I mean, I, I would, you know, I keep on hearing that MSPs, you know, are largely not, you know, like, I don't know if they're doing it during their quarterly business reviews. I don't know if they're not, you know, sending out regular communication to, you know, the actual end user versus the business check signer writer guy. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a constant struggle with, you know, keeping the actual downstream end user educated on, hey, here's things that are, 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 are now available. Here's what you should watch out for. Training your end, your end user has always been difficult, right? Because you're trying to deal with the organizational dynamic. You know, so from a training aspect, how much, how much, you know, are there resources available that people are missing as MSPs that they can parlay into their end customer? Because I feel like that's a big, another big gap, training. Yeah. Like it's, you know, cause ultimately what happens is something happens 
And then the, that, the, 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 the check writer from your end, you know, from your, your customer as an MSP says, what the hell? Why didn't you have something in place? And then you turn around and you're like, oh no, but it's in place. You just didn't know how to use it. And then like, that's when the problem conversation happens. So, so a perfect example. Okay. Cam Newton, right? Where's he going? <laughs> well, Belichick. In New right. England, that's he's where he's going. Belichick. Okay. Completely two different offenses, which Cam Newton ran versus Tom he's going with, 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 with Belichick. Unless yeah. Belichick changes his offense, okay, which I, I don't think. You know, I don't think so. My, my point is, is that Cam Newton's not going to be successful unless Bill Belichick has a strong onboarding process of his entire program. Okay. MSPs are not going to be successful with, with their solutions that they're selling if there's not a strong onboarding with it. And give that expectation. What does 30 days look like? What is, you know, what is 90 days look like? What's six months? But you have to have a strong onboarding. Portal tours, portal refreshers. This is where the, we, there's a wealth of information out there that you're not obtaining. You, you, you said the same thing earlier about uh, the MDF. Oh, wait a minute. We, we, we can get an MDF from you? Are we qualified? Well, you should know that. And you would know that through the onboarding call. Listen, well, here's what happens, okay? Someone scores a touchdown and they just high five each other and then they're done and they don't play defense, you know? It's this, it's not, you can't do that. You can't just sign them, you know, the, a big deal and then turn around and then just be done with it. You know, that's the one thing about the channel that it is a process. It's not a, just an instant win. No, that's it. And, and, and it needs to be cultivated. That's interesting. I mean, listen, I mean, the concept of account management largely doesn't occur unless you're big enough in size, right? I feel like sure. that as a dedicated role tends to fall down at the MSP level just because there's smaller orgs out there sometimes. There's a lot of people wearing a lot of hats. It doesn't happen. But training obviously is, is a real big thing. So generally speaking, you know, now that you're in this new role, right? You're kind yeah. of the man, you know, over, over at your company. And you're talking to a lot of people, I assume, right? Just trying to get a lay of the land and figure out what's happening. Absolutely what are you hearing kind of today, right? I mean, we're kind of still in a weird period. Um, some people are just coasting. Some people are growing. Yeah. Uh, some people are losing too. But I, I'm just trying to get a general gist from you on the people that you've talked to as a collective. What, what, are, you, what are you feeling on the street? What's the, what's the, the, the kind of status quo, if you will? I, I think I, I've, I have talked to so many, you know, uh, guys. I mean, Rob is just a trusted mentor. Um, you know, Rob, Rob is just something I, you know, I hang on his every word, you know, like when he talks, I mean, he's just a, tr a trusted mentor and everything that, you know, he says, I just was like, you know, there's just a lot of thought and experience behind it. And it's, you know, that, that's a, that's a great thing. Um, I think one of the most memorable would probably be Sobel. Um, and he, he said, wasn't really, you know, what people are doing. It's what people are not doing. You know, and he says he's frustrated with the lack of creativity from, you know, the, the channel, you know, and, and, you know, during these times as, as ways to get in, um, in, in touch with people, you know, um, and, you know, Jay wrote an article. I thought that was a great article on you guys, um, you know, in, uh, about the initiative there, um, just complimenting the out of the box thinking, you know, but I, yeah, I, I think that there's a lot. Uh, we, we, we're smart. We're, we're, we, we come together. We're a community. And we, we, I think what we, you know, we, we said, okay. And a lot of it has to do with the pandemic. Okay. Meaning in the sense that, oh, we thought this thing was going to be done by April. We thought it was gonna be done by, you know, May. We thought that outcome was going to happen. Right? You know, we thought all these things were going to happen. And, you know, th th this was just a temporary thing. So we didn't really do long-term, you know, any type of planning on what, you know, the next six months to up to a year is going to look like. And that uncertainty, you know, created, okay, let's do a lot of webinars. Let's do a lot of Zooms, you know, that type of thing. And, you know, and I said, you know, that, that's just kind of what everyone's doing. And like, how can we think out of the box, you know? And, um, and, I, and I'm just, I just keep coming back to the thing, just keep engaging, finding different ways to engage, find, you know, find different ways to be relevant. Um, you know, deliver your message in a post COVID world, because that's what we're in right now. Right. So. No, hundred percent. So, if you could give any advice mm -hmm. to the MSPs watching this call at all on any topic, 
what would you say that is and what you should you, these people be concentrating on to get to the end of 2020 so that we can maybe see a new 2021 on the ground floor, you know, without all the, all the 2020 problems. Yeah, I, I, I could do that in two words. Just communicate value. Just communicate the value. That's all. You know, you bring over what you guys have done, MSPs have done over the past six months. I mean, unsung heroes, you know, the, the late nights, risking their own family's health to get, you know, to go and help and be, uh, you know, a trusted resource for their clients, a small, medium-sized business. You know, make sure that you are putting this something, putting this down somewhere for people can see the value that you bring to the table. Um, you know, we have so many different solutions out there, so many different reports, SLAs, we have RMM, PSA reports, all these different types of things that are out there. You know, make sure you have those reports available um, and, and show your clients, hey, you know what? On the back end, everything worked fine, but you know what? It was because I did this or because we did that, you know? Um, and then of course that's gonna help during, you know, contract negotiations and stuff going in forward. But I, I believe that, yeah, I, I think that we, you know, MSPs can communicate the value they bring to the table more, um, speaking a, a language that you know, people really don't understand, right? You know, the back end of the IT infrastructure. So um, yeah, I think that that's important. That's the most important. Oh, you're on mute again. Yep, auto muting, right? Gotta love Zoom. So, uh, so today we're cutting short. Uh, Matt act actually has to go. And so we usually yeah. do these for an hour, but Matt, I really, Appreciate you coming on board. Where do people find you? How do people get a hold of you? Always, I, I would love to speak to anybody in the channel. Okay, anybody from the CEO to an intern, I would love. To, I would. And you could get me at Matt dot Scully at Mail Protector. Matt dot Scully at Mail Protector dot com. Okay. Awesome. Um, hey George, I'd like to take you up on the back nine. Um, if we're doing an, um, you're doing another interview um, or one of these things, this was fun. Sure. It was always good to, sure. Absolutely. Good to we'll, we'll definitely take you up on that. And everyone, this was recorded. You'll find it online. Again, MSP initiatives, uh, one o'clock Eastern time, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. We're still going strong. We're 34 in. We're going to wow. continue to ride it out and uh, we hope to have Matt on soon. Uh, please follow us online and watch our channel, channel strong tour as we finish our three week tour across America and meet with MSPs in their home turf and kind of get a lay of the land. Touch base with everyone. Talk to you soon, Matt. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thank That's you. It.